Whew. Don't know the next time I'll be able to sip because I got a lot to say in this video. This morning, I got a random DM message from a young lady who is a Christian. She's a little rough around the edges. I do believe that if she fully allows herself to be taken by the Holy Spirit and to surrender, she will be very, very strong in her faith. But her message was something that I felt was worthy of making a video about. Before we do that, if you're new, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe, stay to the end, give me your thoughts. And if you didn't know, this is Biblical Truth Central and I am Brother D. The message in which she sent this morning, I'm paraphrasing, and it was somewhere along the lines of, in your profession, how is it you control yourself as a man? You work around so many women, so many beautiful women. How do you control yourself? Do you not have feelings of lust? Is it God that's controlling you? Because there's so many beautiful women around in the world. There's so many handsome men in the world. How does one not fall into lust? And I, I, I genuinely felt like it was a, a very genuine question that came from a, a, a good place because, you know, she wants to know. How do you do what it is you do and be okay with it? So, you know, before I give her, give you all the answer that I gave her, I want to read a verse out of Job chapter 31. And bear with me. It's only one verse. It says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? If we remember, Job was a married man. So he had a wife, of course. And the covenant of marriage doesn't just involve the spouse, but it absolutely involves God as well. So what Job has affirmed is I'm married. Why would I look at another woman? What is that going to do for me? When I've made a covenant with my eyes, when I've made vows to my wife, when I have brought this woman before God and proclaimed her to be my wife, the answer that I gave this young woman is, well, number one, I'm married. My wife, I remember when we got married in 2012, I had made up in my mind that, you know, this is it. And when I make this decision, there's no turning back. She is the one and there won't be any any other that's just i took that very very seriously and unfortunately in this society a lot of people get married and they they just squander their their marriage away over the smallest things and a lot of people just get married for the wrong reasons and god is not in it and if god's not in it then it's not going to be protected you know so i told this woman that you know i'm married and it's true. I do work around a lot of women. Now, a lot of infidelity uh, seems to take place in the workforce. You know, a lot of we people joke about it all the time. They say, oh, you know, you got a work husband or a 
a work wife, you know, and they, you know, people think this is funny when it's, it's not funny at all. It's very disheartening. It's, it's disgusting. It's terrible for people to even insinuate such a thing because it just completely betrays the covenant of marriage and it is unprofessional as well. But throughout the years, of course, we have seen this play out so many times where a spouse actually does end up cheating on their husband or their wife with somebody that they work with. And I find a lot of times that happens because they aren't really getting what it is they need at home, whether it be, um, you know, just quality time or intimacy. It could be a lot of different things. And, and again, that doesn't justify it whatsoever, but I'm just trying to draw um, an illustration as to, you know, working with the opposite sex can open up dangerous pathways to adultery and fornication and, and other sins as well, lust in general. So, you know, after telling her, you know, I do work with a lot of women, but, you know, I take what I do very, very seriously. And for those of you who didn't know, I'm, I'm in the fitness business. So uh, I am trusted to to work with these women to help them reach their goals, to help them learn and to become educated so that they can become the best version of themselves. Um, a lot of women do come to me in a very vulnerable state. I have trained women who were in the middle of a divorce, who had just gotten divorced, who are single, they just want to better themselves, etc. cetera. Um, and I, I take all of that into consideration, you know, when I'm working with somebody and you know, my number one goal is to gain the trust of the people that I work with. A lot of the females that I work with look at me as a as an older brother, <laughs> should I say, um, in some cases more of a a son figure, because there are some that are a little bit older than me, like well, a lot older than me, and they look at me in that manner. But if it's one thing that they all look at is, you know, this, this guy, this man can be trusted. He is a professional and, um, we don't have to worry about him. So I went on to continue to tell her that, you know, when you have lived in a particular way, which I did when I was much younger, you know, what's on the other side. You know what I'm saying? And and this is me being, you know, transparent. Like I know how it feels to be the cheater. Um, I know how it feels to be cheated on. I know because, you know, I, both sides of the fence, I, I get it in my earlier, earlier days, like a really long time ago when I was in the world. And that feeling is um it's a really, really bad feeling when somebody that you you claim that you care about and that you love um hears you doing things that you promised that you wouldn't do and uh by nature I don't I don't like to disappoint people I don't want to hurt anybody I want to bring joy I want to bring peace I want to educate I want to inspire that is my nature uh, as a man of God today. So, you know, I told her, hey, I know how it is. I've been on that side of the fence before, and that's not anything that I desire. Uh, the older I've gotten, the more I hunger for peace in my home. Um, right now, you know, it's almost midnight. My ch most, of, most of my children are asleep right now, except for my oldest son, uh, my wife is asleep, but the, my point is that we have peace here in this home and, you know, we don't worry about things because, you know, we put all of our trust in God. Nobody is looking over anybody's shoulders and we just don't have anything to be suspicious about because we're very open and we put everything out on the table. So if I, if my wife wanted to go through my phone right now, I wouldn't 
give it to her like in an heartbeat. You know, she knows <laughs> all my passcodes to my phone, to everything. She has keys to things that belong to me because that's my wife. You know, I, the Bible says that, you know, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife. They shall be one flesh. So nobody comes before my spouse. And that's just it. So I also went on to tell the woman, you know, it's it's not hard to, you know, have a one night stand, but it's more admirable and more of a challenge, I'd say, to, you know, fighting the flesh to avoid that type of stuff, especially if it comes your way, because, you know, it definitely has come my way uh, numerous times. I've gotten inappropriate messages. I've gotten uh, inappropriate photographs sent to me and I've had things said to me in my face that, um, I, I just absolutely deflect because again, you know, I'm, I'm a married man. I mean, what am I going to do? What, what can I really do? Nothing. Um, except for honor my wife. And, and that's another thing, you know, when I'm in public, I am a representation of my spouse. So if she's not present, then you will you will definitely know that I am married and you will see that and you will understand that and you shall respect that. Because if you don't, then I am out of here. <laughs> OK, uh, and that goes for friends, business. It doesn't matter if my wife can't be present or if she can't be talked about, then we have nothing to discuss whatsoever. And she is the same way about me. My wife is very protective of me and, you know, almost motherlike, and I'm grateful for that. I really am. And I feel the same exact way uh, about her. So I told this young lady also that, you know, there is much shame when we fall into lust. Um, I don't want to hurt my wife. I don't want to hurt my family, you know, risk losing my family. Uh, I don't want to potentially have a child out of wedlock. I don't want to potentially bring some sort of sexual transmitted disease home to my wife, whether it's treatable or non-treatable. I, I just don't want to bring that into my home and destroy the peace and the happiness that we have. Like we're so we're not a, not a large family, but we we don't have a whole lot, but we do have love and we do have peace and we do have you know just each other and joy and i just know that me succumbing to the lust of my flesh can absolutely disrupt that flow that we have worked so hard to get to and that god has blessed us with and to me, it's it's just simply not worth it. Um, there's a there's I know that there's people who who do this all the time, and there's men who have really bad reputations with relationships with women, and you know being faithful and having issues of infidelity. But you know, and I'm not here to say that I'm better than anybody. But again, you know, I've I've made a personal decision and a personal choice. Uh, to honor my marit my marital vows, to honor God, to honor my kids. Because again, when a person, you know, commits adultery, they cheat on their spouse. They're not just cheating on their spouse. They're cheating on their, their family, their entire family. And that's another thing with me. You know, I am so in love with my family. You know what I mean? Like, I love them so much. Like my kids are my world. Like I get up really early in the morning for them. Everything I do um, on this earth is to try to provide them a home, to try to provide them safety, to try to provide them love and happiness. And all they know is what they see. And I just could not I don't think I could live with myself taking that away from them all because I had a, a weak moment or I just decided I wanted to try something new. 
because at the end of that message that that young lady wrote me, she said, there are lots of other, you know, beautiful women in the world and handsome guys and stuff. I said, yeah, there's always going to be somebody that is physically more attractive, as they say, you know, than the person that you're with. And I think this is a problem with people because they constantly keep looking at this and thinking that that is all that there is to it and they don't look deep into the soul but let me tell you something like i i don't i still believe that my wife is the most beautiful person in the world because not just because of how she looks because she is a beautiful woman but i think about all of the times that we spent together all of the sacrifices that she's made for me uh the way that she takes care of my children the nature that she has she will give her last for me if it really came down to it and there's a lot of people that wouldn't do that so I I don't care physically about what another woman looks like and if you really love your spouse you will feel the same exact way that yeah there's physical physically attractive people in the world there's really nothing we can do about that You know, you can respect it and you can acknowledge it, but that doesn't mean that you have to act on it. And I think that that's what a lot of men and women need to understand, especially if you are married. You need to control yourself and you need to practice discipline and focus on the person that you have chosen to be your spouse. Because God takes marriage extremely seriously. It is. Marriage is an illustration of Christ and the church. The husband is Christ and the wife is the church. The husband gives it, would give his life for his wife, just like Christ gave his life for the church. It's, it is that deep. It really is. And I, I have all of that on my mind, you know, when I walk out that door and I go into the world. I have all of them on my mind when I encounter, you know, women in this world and they, they learn very quickly, like this man is clearly all about his wife and as, as I should be, as I should be. I remember a couple of years ago, I heard a woman say something, you know, she was, she's always like, um, hugged up with her husband and pinching his cheeks and taking pictures with him. And, affirming him and speaking life into him and stuff and she said you know I'm gonna always be extra for my husband like always because if I don't somebody else will and and that's the truth and and the problem is that a lot of times people get married and they stop doing the things that cause them to fall in love with each other and they just settle for contentment and then they just fall off with some of the things that actually brought them close and when you stop doing things like that you start opening up cracks and stuff for the enemy to start creeping in uh my wife is somebody that i date i still date to this day uh that i still almost at 20 years this month she's somebody that i i always get I, i get excited you know when i see her you know if i'm alone with her i still get my heart still you know races and and that 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 those are signs those are definitely signs that there's definitely something there that is has been preserved over the course of years through effort and love and sacrifice and i am very grateful for her and i don't want to destroy what i have for some other woman who may not even be a fraction of the woman that she is just because she may this woman may be beautiful or may have a amazing body like you got to get out of the flesh if you're gonna make anything work I, I believe that you know there's still good men in the world there's still good women in the world it's just a matter of us you know do these men and women put god first you know do they abide by the principle that Job said in on Job 31 verse 1 about making a covenant with his eyes why would he look upon another woman and, and technically it says a younger woman like 
meaning my wife is not, you know, very young. And, you know, me and her just talked about this earlier today. You know, my wife is, she turns 40 years old this year. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the whites in her hair and I told her, don't dye your hair, leave it alone. You know, you look, you look cute, <laughs> you know, as you age, because um, we've been together since we were like, I was 18 and she was 19. So we have literally seen each other, you know, young and aging together is a beautiful thing. And Lord willing, he allows us to see many, many, many more decades together and to raise our kids and to be able to have grandchildren and, and live out the rest of our days uh, serving him. That's what I want, to be honest. It really is, you know, and I told her, hey, don't dye your hair. Um, I don't I don't, I don't need you looking like you're 20 something years old when I'm nowhere near that age. So but um, yeah, that's that's love right there, folks. That's love. And like, yeah, I thought that um, this would be a good video to share with somebody out there. Just kind of give you some perspective uh, from somebody who who does practice self-control. And a lot, there may be a woman out there who doesn't think that there's any good men. There are good men in the world. They are. You know, just make sure that they have God first in their life. And, and I'm not talking about just just saying it, but that they are rooted in the word of God and that they, they pray daily and that they walk out their Christian life. And, and they're not, you know, just they're not faking. And if they're not faking and they really have a heart after God, then he'll be able to love you. And that's all I can say, to be honest with you, you know, whether it's a man or a woman, if, if they love God properly, they will 100 percent be able to love you and you don't have to worry about anything going on outside of your home okay all right folks that was very long-winded but i hope you all enjoyed this video god bless you i appreciate each and every one of you your support your your comments your likes do me a favor subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next video peace